Hola, mi gente. This is Jackie Nunez for Latin Waves. Today I have a special guest, kind of a continuation from the last week, that I had Tito Rodriguez Jr. Now I have his lead singer, Sammy Gonzalez Jr. Welcome. Thank you so much for the invitation. Oh, my pleasure. Okay, it's an honor. It's an honor to be here and to follow the footsteps of, of Tito's interview. I don't know how we're going to do this. So, Well, you have an interesting <laughs> career yourself. So I don't even know at this point where to start because you are the legislator of... Yes, so I am. Do, the... well, we'll go politically first. Okay. How did you get into politics? Hey, listen, I'm going to fast forward because in 2012, my daughter uh, program, uh, BOCES program, Yes. was going to be cut from a two to a one year program. And then she came home crying. And so I started to advocate for my daughter and many of the other students. I called my, uh, at the time in 2012, I called the uh, elected officials in 2012. Wow. Here we are in 2022. I'm still waiting for them to call me. So wow. that started my advocacy and my run to try to run for politics. So what is your goal? What is your, your ultimate goal as, as a legislator? What is it that you want to pursue? One of the main things is that I want to make sure that um, my community, which is high Latino, high minority, that we get an equal share, that we are treated equally like every other district that we get the respect, that we get the jobs. Um, we have corporations, we have companies that, you know, um, are professional companies, certified companies, but never get the opportunity to bid on RFPs to help grow. And so, and I know it's only because, you know, they have their, their regulars, but people, minorities, Latinos, um, uh, African Americans, uh, Muslims, which is many in my community, um, and so forth, do not get that opportunity. And I said that once I get into office, which I tried two times before, failed, learned a lot, but the third time's a charm. And now, three elections later, um, I'm here. But that's my goal, is to make everyone aware that we're here. Latinos, we're here, right. and that's important to me. Absolutely, and thank you for your service to your community. Thank you. Because I see you do a lot for the community. Oh my God, yes. I have, a, I, I have a picture of you with a little girl. I think she was a Girl Scout or something. Yeah. She had a uniform. I thought that was adorable. Yeah. So there are many things, and you do things for veterans as well. Tell us about that. Yeah, we do. I do a lot of work with the veterans. Um, Suffolk County is number one in veterans that live in Long Island. And sometimes they're forgotten. Um, sometimes there's a lot of veterans that are homeless. And so that to me, is so important. That to me is so important that those individuals that were there for us and fought for our liberties, that how on earth can we not give back to them? How on earth can we not fight for them? And so when you see the, also the children, um, those are our future. Absolutely. And so, you know, I've told them my story of how I grew up um, and my struggles, and they relate to me. And that is important because not only should we look out for the elderly, should we look out for those who were before us that paved a lot of the roads for us, that we also do uh, the same for the youth that they know that we work, we help them achieve their goals. But the one thing I tell them is do not forget where you came from. Come back and speak to the future so they can see, wow, that person was actually where I was. 
and I can do it. So the kids, very, very important uh, that they, they know that. They are our future. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And what do you plan to do? What are your upcoming plans to help the community and help enforce, whether it's help enforce laws, help them gain access to better their businesses, their, you know, the events and stuff like How do you plan to help the community that way? Well, we have to make sure that we put in smart laws. As a legislator, um, you know, you, you, you vote on particular laws that other legislators put forward or they lay on the table. But if they do not work for your community, then there's a problem. So I will vote against that. But I would also put and lay on the table laws that are smart, that help um, not only all of Suffolk County, but help uh, those in my district. That is so important to me because I think we, uh, uh, the minority community in Suffolk County has been neglected for some time. We are making changes. Uh, there are smart laws that are coming in, but we still have a lot to go. So how do you fight the laws that are not advantageous for the community? What we try to do is um, we'll set up uh, uh, some amendments to that particular law. So I'll put in, uh, I'll, I'll lay on the table a amendment because there's a, there's a part of that law that maybe at the time they didn't think about, but it is affecting us. Example, there was a law in the books um, as a homeowner. An old, old law that said, and it was in it, in their lease when they first signed a long many, many years ago that said you could not sell your home to an African American. It was in there. It was in the books. Isn't that illegal? Not back then. Okay? It was something that they fought for early on when they were building these homes. So when we got to that particular law that it was brought to my attention, we entered an amendment. We re you know, it, 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 it shed light when we put that in that it, after all these years, that section was still there. Wow. And, and, and that, to me, frightened me. So, so now technically, it was removed. they would have to go by that if it still if existed. If it still existed. So wow. not too many people knew that. So we removed it all across Suffolk County. That makes sense. Thank God. So uh, there are people that come up to me and say, Sam, we need to do this. And if it makes sense, I will. You know? Now, I mean, I think you do a wonderful thing for the community, but I want to start talking about your music career. Ay, bendito. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, obviously now you, you sing with Tito Rodriguez, Jr., but I want to go a little before then. You actually sang with a very dear friend of mine, Louis Ramirez. Yes, yeah, Was it years. Louis Ramirez y sus amigos? Was it Louis that? Ramirez y sus amigos. Wow. Um, I think you, you recorded with him. Right? I recorded two albums with him. Um, Louis gave me my break. I was singing with local bands, a group by the name of La Herencia Latina, back in the days with Ray Rico Rodriguez. Right. May he rest in peace. But I remember playing with La Herencia at a, uh, a wedding, and Louis was there. Hmm. And so I remember two days later, I got a phone call saying from Roberto Rodriguez Jr., trumpet. He says, Sammy, Louis wants to talk to you. I go, Louis who? Louis Ramirez. I was like <laughs> tongue-tied. I was nervous. I started to sweat. I said, sure, no problem. I get the phone call. He said, Sammy, I want you to learn some songs and I want you to audition for me. And I go, Louis, sure. 
Um, where do you live? I live in so and so and so. He came by an hour later. Gives me a cassette. Cassette, guys. If nobody knows what that is, it's a little plastic, you know, <laughs> rectangular type of thing with a little uh, ribbon. ribbon inside there that played music back in the days. And so he said, learn these songs and come down and audition. I go, okay, um, where do you want me to go to audition? Well, today's Monday. We have a gig on Saturday at the Copacabana, the original Copacabana, the one on 61st Street. 61st. And he says, that's your audition. <laughs> I'm like. That sounds like what we. <laughs> are you, you want me to play at the Copacabana? My first. So I just got on that cassette. I think the, the, the thread or whatever it's called, the little tape there was like stretched out. And so there I go. We go up on stage. I did my first set. We go back into the dressing room and I'm anxiously waiting for Luis Ramita to tell me yes or no. And I'm, I can see myself <laughs> perspiring from the mirror and Louis leaves. And I, and I was about to go, Louis, what? And he just walked right by me, he didn't even look at me. First thing I think about was, oh my God, I bombed. I bombed. Robert Rodriguez comes up to me and he says, Sam, welcome to the band. Mm -hmm. And all the musicians, one by one, they came in. I knew if we didn't hand, say anything, it's because he liked And it. then he comes <laughs> back like 20 minutes later laughing. <laughs> so how do you like the band? You know how Louis was. Yes. And what a guy. And seven years later, before he got together again with Rey de la Paz for Otra Noche, Caliente, um, I was his singer for seven years. And they were the best seven years, I will tell you, in my early career. He gave me the opportunity where nobody would. We did Louis and Friends. I sang two songs on there. En la madrugada. Yeah, Easy, I'm so sorry, guys. And, and so, you know, that's, that's, that was my introduction to Luis Ramire. And we did so many gigs together. I remember one day we did four gigs in one night. I think we left the last club at six or seven o'clock. No, eight o'clock in the morning. We were going out and I remember the the senior women with their Bibles going to church, and I'm going, oh my God. <laughs> and so, I'll never forget him. He gave me, he is my godfather in music. He gave me the opportunity um, when nobody else wanted to give me a, he says, and I remember Tito Allen going up to uh, Louis and going, hey, he said, he's, he's brand new, you gotta give him the opportunity to sing, and Louis goes, yep. Mm -hmm. And the rest was, history. was history, seven years later. That's amazing. Louis. Why do you suppose Louis didn't get the recognition that he solely deserved? Because <sighs> he was an outstanding arranger, composer, musician, played just about everything. He was an outstanding individual. Um, I don't know, you know, I think that will always be a mystery on why, because the creator of Romantic Salsa, many people think that Frankie or uh, Santiago or these guys were the originators of Romantic Salsa, mm. and it was Louis Ramirez. Well, Louis was the only one known to make Romantic Salsa with a lot of swing. Absolutely, especially with the vibes. Exactly. It was just unbelievable. And he's also one of the founders of, creators of the Boogaloo. Exactly. Exactly. So this man was a, a genius. That's yeah. why they called him El Genio. El Genio, which 
Which is the album you recorded on, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I remember doing an English for a tribute to Cal Jada, Good Night, My Love. Good Night, My Love. I play that, that all the time on my Because that was the, yes. and the Latin nightclub scenes, they that loved was it. like the last song before, you know, closing the bar, Good Night, My Love. Yes. And that to me was just, and he played you know, the vibes on that. It was oh, he played the vibes beautiful. on that. And I remember meeting Frankie Crocker. Wow. Frankie talked to Louis Ramirez and said, yo, you should do this in, 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 in Latin music. And Louis did it. And Frankie used to play that as his last song of the night. It's funny. I think, I think it was WBLS. BLS. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I'm showing my age. I'm sorry. I, I know about that. Okay. <laughs> um, and so I'm telling you, um, to have started with a man like that, to have started with, with, with a genius, you know, I will never forget him. I will always give him the credit. And he was called the Quincy Jones of South. South. Oh, he was. Now, let's fast track. Now you, you also sang with Johnny Ray. Yes. Tell me about that experience. Um, let's. It is a unique experience. Um, you know, working with a with a gentleman like 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 Johnny. Um, uh, they, I got a call from the Pope the other day that I am one um, miracle away from sainthood. Um, <laughs> And so, but I do have to say something about Johnny. Johnny has been one of the hardest people working uh, individuals in show business. You know, he knows how to, he knows how to get his records out. He knows every year he puts something new, stay relevant, yeah. you know. Um, he always managed to get the good or the great musicians to record. Absolutely. And he's very good with that. And very commercial. Yes. Very, very, very commercial. I, you know, and uh, you know, I've had the opportunity on and off to be um, to to have worked with um, uh, with Johnny Ray for, I think, twenty six years. Wow. Twenty six and a half years. God bless you. Because I've been with Tito mm -hmm. Rodriguez Jr. No. Of um, course. My brother. Um, uh, my brother, it will not go on again, I promise. <laughs> this lets me know that I've been talking too much again. Um, and so, you know, um, working, working with, uh, with Tito has just been an honor. Now, you've but, had guys done some great venues oh from my God. all over the world. You know, Rome, Italy, even we've, L.A. and we've, West Coast. We've traveled Europe. We've traveled to France, to um, to, to to Rome, to Milan, uh, Germany, London. Uh, we've been all over the world. I think three times over. I'm on my fifth passport anyway. Wow. But. The, the big band sound is what intrigues me. It's what people enjoy. Yes. It is something that to see 16-piece orchestra or a 18-piece orchestra is unbelievable. And the thing is, when you go play out in Europe, you and I had a conversation not too long ago, and you start to sing. and the crowd is singing your songs is because they've had an impact with that recording. Okay. Why do you think, and I've asked Dito this question as well, our music is more prevalent in places like that than it is here? And what do you think we can do to change that? I think here we take it for granted. Yes. I think we take it for granted. I think we we, we, we have to educate um, our youth. What I haven't seen too much of is parents um, putting the education in of 
what is un asopao, que es un sancocho. Um, Cómo se hace un pastel, los pasteles, um, you know, of, of going to, 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 to their native land, to go to Puerto Rico and say, eh, mira, estamos en la finca. Uh, we don't teach them our culture, We do our not history. really, really right. teach them our culture. Yes. And if we're not really, really teaching them our culture, many of our kids don't even speak the language. They'll speak Spanglish. Hmm. And because of things like that, it has moved on to our music. They're more interested in reggaeton. Sure. They're more interested in el merengue este, and everything else, except what it really means to listen to a machito, what it is to to listen to Patito Rodriguez, la música de Tito Puente. Um, that's missing. Very much so. It's missing and we, we, we lose that. Because if you listen to those yesteryears, I will tell you the music is unbelievable. Yes, it is. I want to congratulate the band, Tito, yourself, I am part of the East Coast Music Hall of Fame, and congratulations on the nomination. Thank I look you. forward to seeing you guys in June. Yes, absolutely. And, well, we'll see what happens, right? But now this music that, how do you think we can proceed from here? I, I see you, you guys did the New Millennium, the Palladium in the New Millennium. Correct. And I understand you're going to Puerto Rico. Yes. And, and is this because of what happened that day at Lehman? I'm going to tell you absolutely. Um, I think that they, they saw something that hasn't been seen in a long time. The combination, the musicality, the professionalism of Tito and Tito and Mario and the orchestration, the big band sound. Mm -hmm. um, this type of music on that particular day expanded many, many of the promoters. And so, yes, Puerto Rico, we're looking at California, uh, we're getting calls from Colombia. And so this is generating, it's just getting huge. And it's also great because we can show La Musica del Palladio. The Palladium years now. Because sure. if you look at the dancers today, Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll dance to the new music, but they'll always gravitate back to the original. To the original. Absolutely. And why and not bring need, it back? Exactly. And yeah. we need to do that. We need to educate. We need to make sure, you know? What are your plans musically? I mean, do you have a plan of recording yourself? Oh my God, there's so many people that keep <laughs> asking me this question. I'm having fun. Between that and writing a book. Which uh, one's coming first? I think the book. <laughs> <laughs> I think the book is going to come before. Um, yeah, I have been thinking about doing a recording, um, you know, um, on my own, with the blessing of Tito, of course. Um, uh, that's the respect that I have for Tito Rodriguez Jr. I would want him to assist he must me. commend you on and your producing, loyalty. And producing... Mm -hmm my first album which i want him to to be part of and so that in the future right now we're making some great music um there's not too many people that have been together with a band uh leader for 25 26 years um i must say you, you represent tito rodriguez very well thank you and thank you that means a it lot was to me. one he was one singer that no one could ever come close to. And but and with all still, due respect, and, and they you, still can. Mm -hmm. You're right. It's just that he was a class of his own. He he was oh, he was a superstar all on his own. I all I wanted to do is to try and sing his music well. Uh, not impersonate Tito Rodriguez, but the classiness 
and the articulation, the professionalism um, in the way he performed and the way that he sang, no one will ever be able to imitate right. Tito Rodriguez. That's right. But if I can just consistently, consistently go and do this and, 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 and you know, make him proud, I think I might, I, I must be doing something right because you're, 25 you're still years there, later. 20, yes. yeah. and, and I want to thank you for representing Tito Rodriguez very well. And I want to thank you for having this interview with me. We got to do this Anytime. again. Anytime. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> we, about it, we got a political side and we have a musical side. So. But Tito, thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Um, thank you for allowing me to write my own music. Uh, and allowing to record many of my songs. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Tito. Well, this is Jackie Nunez for Latin Waves, and thank you. Have a great night.